All right, guys, here we go. This is the test for trigonometry, right triangles, fat, uh, you know, simplifying radicals, all the stuff we've been doing. And we start with just a big old question here. Um, I might have changed the names for a, for a new year or something like that, but it doesn't change the premise of the question. So we're going to read it. We're going to draw it out. We're going to try to solve it. <clears throat> it says Jackson and Nathan are dancing in the park. Jackson, Jackson spots a butterfly and wants to add it to his collection. So this is Jackson down here. He's got the butterfly. Jackson and Nathan are supposed to stay near the light post in the middle of the park. The light post is 45 feet tall. Got it. And it's fabulous. Jackson runs so far but never catches the butterfly. Oh, poor Jackson. He turns around and quickly realizes that the angle of elevation from the ground is 14 degrees to the light post. So he has a 14 degree angle of elevation to the light post. Nathan is sitting dangerously on top of the highest monkey bars in the land, opposite the light post from Jackson. And notice the angle of depression from his location 60 feet above the ground. All right, so he is 60 feet above the ground. Whoop, get that number in there. That'd be 60 feet above the ground to be 13 degrees to the top of the light post. So that would look something like this. So I could draw the triangle like that or I could draw it out like this, it doesn't matter. But technically this is the angle of depression. Angle of depression is 13 degrees, but Jackson's depression of 13 would be equal to this elevation being 13. Remember that those are alternate interior angles. So I'm gonna put it there, I think it's a little bit easier to see. If the entire height is 60, the light post is 45, wouldn't that leave me with 15 feet here? Yes, the answer is yes. What is the horizontal distance from Nathan to Jackson if they are collinear with the light post? Will they ever find each other again? All right. So this distance here, call it X, we can get. So that would be, if we focus on the right triangle up here by Jackson, uh, uh, by Nathan, I'm going to redraw it. So this is what we're working with. We have a 15, we have a 13 degree angle, and we're looking for that horizontal distance. So that would be the tangent of 13 equals opposite 15 over X adjacent. If X is down low, they switch places, you know. You got to get tricky with it. And so that'd be 15 divided by the tangent of 13. So this distance is 15 divided by the tangent of 13. And then we'll do the same idea here. We can, we can get this distance. Call it Y. I'm going to draw Jackson's right triangle over here. But what we have is a 45 foot light pole, a 14 degree angle of elevation, and we're looking for that side. So that would be the tangent of 14 equals opposite 45 over adjacent y. So that distance is 45 divided by the tangent of 14. And what I'm going to do is add those two numbers together in my calculator. And when I do that, I get 245. It says, um, what is the horizontal distance? Pay attention, you can do this. Does it actually tell us how to round? It doesn't tell us how to round, does Oh, it says right here. The distance from Nathan to Jackson rounded to the nearest whole number. I was about to say, why did I do the nearest whole number earlier? Yeah, it's going to be 245. Got it. All right, number two. If I tell you that the sine of A is 24 over 25, what you can do is draw a right triangle, Call one of the corners A, not the 90, not the 90. But if that is corner A, wouldn't opposite be 24 and the hypotenuse be 25? Right? Isn't this opposite divided by hypotenuse? The answer is yes. So what's the third side? That's a triple. That's a 7, 24, 25. So what is the cosine of A? The cosine of A would be adjacent over hypotenuse, 7 over 25. For the next one, cosine of R. So let's draw another right triangle. Call one of the corners R. The cosine is 9 over 10. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to have to do some trig or do some Pythagorean theorem. That'll be the square root of 10 squared minus 9 squared. That's 100 minus 81. That's the square root of 19. 
So what is the tangent of angle R? The tangent of angle R would be opposite over adjacent, which is root 19 over 9. So these are instructions, right? That's opposite. Nope. That's adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine has to be adjacent over hypotenuse. These are instructions on how to make a right triangle. A regular hexagon is formed using six congruent equilateral triangles. If these are equilateral triangles, we know all these angles are 60. I'm not going to fill out every angle, but they're all 60. We should be thinking about when we have equilateral triangles, we should be thinking about cutting it to make a 30, 60, 90. If the length of each side of the hexagon is 12, that means all these sides all the way around is 12, what is the area of the hexagon? So there's a few ways you could do this, but basically we need the area of this triangle. So let me draw that triangle. Whoop, whoop, whoop. We got 60, 60, 60. We know that all three sides are 12. Could we do one half? times 12, times 12, times the sine of 60? And the answer is yes. Remember, we learned last unit we can do, there's a formula, 1 half A, B times the sine of C, A, B, sine of C. That would be one triangle, and then how many triangles are there? There are six of them. You could do this. You type that in, you're going to get the right answer. Let me check real quick, make sure I got the right answer here. 1 half times 12 times 12 sine 60 times 6 of them, 374.123. But I'm going to just make sure that we're aware that there is another way to do this if it's an equilateral triangle. If these are 12 and 12 and this the corners are 60, you could drop a height. Because it's equilateral, that would make it a 30, 60, 90. So on a 30, 60, 90, the hypotenuse is 12. This would be 6, and this would be 6 root 3. So the base would be 12 as well because it's equilateral. That would be 1 half times 12 times 6 root 3. That's one triangle times 6 of them. So you could do it like this or like this. I promise you these are the same thing. How do we know? What is the sine of 60 degrees? Anybody, anybody? It's root 3 over 2. And that is actually something you should know, right? If you have a 30, 60, 90, it's 1, root 3, and 2. The sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. So if you were to multiply this out, it's actually the exact same thing as this. So there's a couple ways to do it. Bottom line is you have to get the area of one of these triangles and multiply it by six triangles. All right, the sides of a triangle are this. Annie thinks it's a right triangle, while her friend, Monty the monkey, thinks it's an acute triangle. Who's correct? First thing I would do, if possible, is reduce. I can't. We need to check that it's even a triangle. So what is 18 plus 24? 18 plus 24 is 42, and this is 35. So is it a triangle? Yes. Once you know it's a triangle, then you square the numbers. 18 squared, 24 squared, 35 squared. So 18 squared is 324. 24 squared is 576. And 35 squared is 1225. Add those together. We got 324 plus 576. And that is 900 versus 1225. When C squared is bigger... It is obtuse. So neither are correct. It's an obtuse triangle. Remember the rules. If A squared plus B squared equals C squared, it's a right triangle. If A squared plus B squared is more than C squared, in other words, if C squared is smaller, it's an acute triangle, right? As 90 degrees gets smaller, the right angle gets smaller. The hypotenuse has to get smaller. And if A squared plus B squared is less than C squared, in other words, the hypotenuse got bigger, then that would make 90 degrees get bigger, making it obtuse. And that's what we have here. We have C squared as 1225, which is bigger than A squared plus B squared. 
Find the short leg of a 30, 60, 90 triangle if the hypotenuse is five. So 30, 60, 90 triangle, hypotenuse of five. This is one root three, two. So we have the two, right? That's what we have. We divide by two, that would be five halves. So the short leg would be five halves. Multiply by root three, and you'd have five halves root three for the long leg. But they just wanted the short leg that would just be five divided by two, or five halves. Type it as a fraction. Um, here we have another one. Draw it out. We got a 30, 60, 90. The short leg is five. So the short leg is five. What is the long leg? Well, that would just be five root three. The hypotenuse would be 10. Like this is stuff you need to be able to do. This would be five root three and 10. And they just wanted the long leg. That would just be five root three. And then another 30, 60, 90. It says the long leg is five. So again, one root three, two. The long leg is five. We do, basically we're saying something times root three equals five. You can think about it like that. Um, but you're going to have to divide by the square root of three. Well, what does that look like? Remember, you multiply by root three over root three, and you get five root three over three. My hope is that you don't actually have to do all this on paper, that you can do all that in your head and realize that that's five root three over three. Um, so that's the short leg. Double that times two, and you get 10 root three over three. And that's what they're looking for, the hypotenuse. Um, all right, so we got some tough ones here. Remember that little a would be the side across from capital A. So they're saying that this side is 153. Little t is the side length across from angle t. This side's 135. What triple is used? So what I would do is reduce these numbers. And if you don't know, like the, I, big numbers like this would be on a calculator section. Do 135. Ah, I can't type it in. 135 over 153. And I get 15 over 17. That's what that reduces to. So I know this third side is going to be 8. So 153 divided by 17. So that's divided by 9. So 8 times 9, this is going to be 72. So the scale factor is 9. The triple is 8, 15, 17. Type as a fraction, the, such as 3 fourths, what is the tangent of angle D? So D is up here. Tangent would be opposite. So the tangent of D would be opposite 8 over adjacent 15, 8 over 15. What's the sine of angle D? Sine of D would be opposite. Oops, sine of angle D would be opposite 8 over hypotenuse 17. So those would be those answers. Love it. Using the same numbers as the previous question. Okay, let's go get those real quick. 72, 135, and 153. And remember, if we draw the smaller version, that that was 8, 15, and 17. And these are angles D, A, and T. Okay. Using the same numbers as the previous question, how big is angle D? So I'll call this X. So that means the tangent of x equals opposite 8 over 15 adjacent. So x would equal inverse tangent 8 over 15. Inverse tangent 8 over 15. I get 28.072 round to the nearest thousandths. Is that the only way to do it? Nope. I could have done, like, I mean, we just set it up over here. Like, could we have done inverse sine of 8 over 17? Yep. Could we have done inverse cosine of 15 over 17? Yes. So we could have done sine, cosine, or tangent. We knew all the numbers. We could do any combination. If you double the size of angle D, okay, so that would be 2 times inverse tangent 8 over 15. Wouldn't that be twice the size? And the hypotenuse remains 153. How long is AD? So it is a brand new triangle. Angle D is at the top. A is over here. AD is what I'm going to call X. They said the hypotenuse remains 153. And this, my friends, is the angle D. I don't want to write all of that every time. But I'm, you just need to know, hey, that, that's right here. Whatever that number is, you know, twice this is going to be 56 point something. But we don't want to use a rounded number to work forwards. All right. So how would we set this up? Based off angle D, this would be adjacent over hypotenuse. 
So it's going to be the cosine of angle D equals adjacent X over hypotenuse 153. So X is going to equal 153 times the cosine of angle D. Well, I'll go ahead and write it all now. That's going to be 2 times the inverse tangent of 8 over 15. So this is the answer. So I type that in. I get 153 times the cosine, use parentheses, 2 times inverse tangent, 8 over 15. When I type that in, round to the nearest whole number, it comes out to 85 degrees. The tricky part here is that the only thing that stayed the same was the hypotenuse. Everything else changed. This didn't, this changed, this changed, this angle doubled. So I had to do two times that angle. That's why I wrote it as two times that angle. All right, going forward. That's a hard question, by the way, I know. Which one of these are triples? Three, four, five, yes. Eight, 15, 17, nope. Eight, 24, nope. Seven, 24, 25, nope. Eight, 15, 17, yes. Seven, 24, 25, yes. Five, 12, 13, nope. Five, 12, 13, yes. Find the indicated value around all answers to the nearest whole number. Nice. So what do we have here? We have a right angle. This would, we're trying to find the short leg. Well, if that's 71, then this would be 19. So this would be the short leg. Remember that the short leg is always across from the small angle. So 71 is bigger than 19. So this would be the short leg. Over here would be the long leg. So based off that, I have two options. I could use the 19 or the 71. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to use the 71. So this would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So this would be the cosine of 71 equals adjacent x over hypotenuse 10. So that is 10 times the cosine of 71. 10 cosine 71 is 3.2 something, which rounds down to 3. The smallest angle in the triangle, well, we can just do some trigonometry. My guess, if this is 11 and 7, my guess is that this is the smallest side, which would make this the smallest angle. That's my guess. I haven't actually done the Pythagorean theorem to confirm. Just a guess. So I'm going to call this angle x, and I'm going to find that angle. So this would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine of x equals adjacent 7 over hypotenuse 11. So this is an inverse cosine of 7 over 11 to get this answer. So I'm going to do inverse cosine of 7 over 11. And I'm looking for a number whether – I want a number – the smallest angle will be less than 45, right? So this actually isn't it because this comes out to around 50 degrees. So rounding to the nearest whole number, if that's 50 degrees – then the other one would be 40 degrees. So I guessed wrong. This number actually comes out to be more than 7, apparently. So my educated guess was not very good. That's okay. Um, I knew that 45 degrees was the cutoff. If my angle was more than 45, I knew that it was bigger than the other one, right? If my angle was less than 45, then I knew I had the smallest one. Because it came out to be about 50, I knew that the other one had to be smaller, and that's the one I wanted. All right, and that's the end of this review. Hey, that was a lot of fun. There's definitely some hard questions in there. Keep working hard. I believe in you guys.